Hello everybody, it's Adam here, uh, coming back to you from Houdini version 15. And today we're going to build a fracture system where particles uh, release the strength on glue bonds. So we're going to crumble a tube with particles. Control click on the tube and we'll rename this to Geo Fracture Source. And we'll dive inside, set our height to 5 rows and columns to 32, our Y center to 2.501, and we'll activate end caps. And we'll also I'll drop down an edge cusp and that's what our particles are going to collide with. So we'll, we will go back up one level, we'll control click on the grid, and then I'm going to mouse wheel around till the X is pointing to the left drag the emitter over here, go up, rotate it to face our column, and then uh, maybe I'll scale this in a bit like that. Let's click on the particles tab, choose source particles, press the up arrow key to start uh, the animation, we'll switch to real time, and I'll set our length to 48. With this grid object source selected, uh, let's go to attributes and under velocity x we'll type 10. So that's, our particles are going to strike the surface. That's what uh, we're trying to do here. Let's go to birth and turn off constant activation. For impulse we're going to use dollar sign f greater than 12, ampersand ampersand dollar sign f less than 24. We'll set our impulse count to 2. So now we get a small barrage of particles during this time range. Okay, let's go up one level, I'll press the L key, we'll select Geo Fracture Source, and for rigid bodies, we'll make it a static object. Let's dive back into our Autodop network, press L to lay it out, and continue setting this up. Rewind. Now if we press play now, we should see the particles actually bounce off our object. And we want to record those impacts, so we'll select the pop solver, collision behavior, add impact data. Let's go ahead and split top bottom. We will right click on scene view, geometry spreadsheet, open up pop object, and we'll notice this is flickering on and off. And that's because impact data only exists when it occurs. There it is, right there. And this is the data path is named impacts, and the record is named impacts. So if I go forward, it remains, it remains, it remains, it remains, and now it's gone. So we want to create a piece of geometry that represents every impact point on this surface. So let's go up one level. I'm going to rename this network to generate impacts, and we'll colorize it blue. And I'll press tab, type geo, drop down a new geometry, and this will be called collect impacts. So we'll dive inside, delete the file, and we'll type dop, and this time we'll choose import records. That's where that information is stored. It's in, stored in a record. The data path is impacts. The record is impacts. And the dop network we'll just select up here. And if we press play, we'll see, blip, 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 we get some impact information, but it doesn't persist. So we know we can make data persist by adding a solver. We'll add a solver, whoops, I uh, pressed the wrong keys, so we'll add a solver, connect it in. Uh, we'll add, view it, dive inside, and uh, the simplest solver in the world is just the memory solver. So it takes what's previous emerges it with what's current. And now if we look at our animation, we'll see that the particles build up over time. And there they are. So we want them to exist continuously throughout all of time. So we just need a simple time shift here. We drop down our time shift, make that our visible flag, and then left click on frame instead of a changing value, we'll just type F end, which is going to be the length of our animation. Now you can see when I press play, I have points that exist throughout the entire animation. Let's go up one level, 
jump into our GeoFracture source and we can import those points. So we'll type uh, object merge here and uh, then we'll type JIT and then we'll type uh, point, choose the point replicate and then we're going to type VOR, choose the Voronoi fracture and then we'll connect these in. Geometry on the left, points in the middle, these guys get connected together and then we'll select the object merge and bring in our collected impacts. We'll make this transform into this object and our point jitter will leave as default but our replicate here we're going to kind of tame down. We'll drop that to 10 points per point. You can turn this off and for shape we can dial this down a bit so that we get these little clusters where our impacts are occurring there. And we can activate Voronoi and now you can see our fracture points are related to these impact points and if I adjust the uniform scale I can indeed affect and create a new fracture uh, or tune in the one that's existing there. Okay, we're basically we have a pre-fractured object that we want to use in a sim now. So let's select this blue network and press Control X to delete the network from our scene. We'll click the ground plane which will make a new Autodop network and install itself in that network. And that's the reason why I deleted the blue network is because if you just click the ground plane object uh, it will install into a the first network it detects. So I'm going to paste my blue network back in because we still need it and we're good to go. Now we have a clean Autodop network with a ground plane installed. We'll select our GeoFracture source. We will fracture into a packed object then we'll glue them all together. We'll press enter and now we have a glue network. So this is where we're going to do our magic is inside this SOP solver which removes glue bonds. So we'll throw away what's in there and just take a look at the relationship geometry that exists. This is the uh, bonds that hold all of our fracture pieces together. So we're going to use color, we'll drop down color, um, we'll drop down another color to mix this stuff together. We've got, uh, we'll set this color to black and then we'll set this one to red and we'll make sure we type 1.0 here. We want our R channel to be 1. And then we're going to do a DOP IO and bring in the particle system from that blue network. So we'll browse out to not this one, but the generate impacts. And then from within generate impacts, we also want the pop object. I connect that into color and we will add a field and set that to no change. Let's drop down an attribute transfer. So basically when the particle points get close to the relationship geometry, color will be transferred. Uh, and we need to set up the attribute transfer. We'll turn off primitives. For points we'll type CD. For conditions we'll set the distance threshold to 0 0.65. So they need to be pretty close. Then uh, we are going to attribute promote the color up to the primitive level. So we type CD point to primitive and then we're going to drop down attribute wrangle and we're going to make it run over primitives. Um, if v at cd.r equals 1.0 then uh, we will remove prim zero means self at prim num is the one we're currently working on one means uh, points and lines and then we're going to do an else here of f at strength which is a built-in attribute of the glue system equals uh, local strength so I'm going to go ahead here and add in this local strength and uh, be a float up here to say local strength local strength except 
I have this spell drawing I'm gonna get E in there. There we go. Make this visible. And now what I can do is I can go to the actual glue constraint, right click copy, and then dive in here and paste this as a relative reference. And that makes it convenient. If you change it out there, it will, the code will detect that now. If we press play, we should see the results here. There it is. Our particles, when I turn red, they remove those points or these lines or these bonds that hold everything together. So we'll go up one level, we'll read our warning message. It says cached results are incorrect, which often occurs when you have multiple um, simulations that are interconnected soft by soft links such as .io. So I'm going to reset that one. I'm going to reset this one. And now when I rewind and play, we can see it falls apart when the particles strike. But we can't see the particles. Let's dive back into this SOP solver and grab, select this .io and copy it to the clipboard. We'll go all the way up into source particles. And what happened is this .io became broken when we did it that control X. So I'm just going to paste in a new one that's linked to the same thing. Now when we rewind, we can see our particles when they strike the surface. Um, we're getting our chunks are falling down only at that time. And I think it looks pretty good. So with that, have some fun, play around, and I'm out.